celebrate, Jesus celebrate, celebrate, Jesus celebrate, oh, celebrate, Jesus celebrate, celebrate, Jesus celebrate. Praise the Lord. Good morning again, everybody. Welcome to Kingdom Conversation. Wow. Wasn't that an amazing time yesterday evening? It was. If you missed it yesterday, just go back on uh, on my timeline. It's also on YouTube right now. And so you can go rewatch and listen to it. We were talking about uh, prophet the, the prophetic and the uh, Grows as a Christian, not to remain on one um, on one stage. If you are not growing, uh, if it's getting boring, if you are not active in the things of God, then you've stopped growing. Because Christianity is, I can't understand people saying Christianity is boring. Yeah. Anyway, good morning, and you're welcome to Kingdom Conversation, Reverend. Yes. Here we go again. That's right. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. Amen. So. I want to encourage you, like we did yesterday, if you have questions, write them on uh, and, and just let's see. Uh, where us, yeah, we'll, we'll pick up your questions and then we can talk around it. But we're going to kick off from where we stopped yesterday. Some of you are asking questions about the discipleship stages. And uh, we did give our word that we're just going to list those eight um, and just go through. But you need to get a book. Is a... Um, um, Defeating the Mother Frog Syndrome. That's the name of the book. 
where all of this is detailed. They are detailed out. But so you can have a, a bit of what is inside, uh, we're going to go around it and talk a little bit about it. Reverend Vashigu. Yeah, yeah thank you. Well, uh, I'm glad to be back here again. You, you know, as I was meditating over this uh, through the night and um, and then studying and just looking through some things, I realized that, you know, when you, when you don't lay your foundation properly, then you're going to have issues with the structure. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yeah. You know, it's one of the few questions in the Bible that has no answer. I mean, it has answers, but it was not given to us by God. It just left the questions. I mean, made, made, made some questions open. And and something like, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous, righteous do? Still. So it's leaving the righteous to decide or to determine what he would do in response to a faulty foundation. Mm. So mm. the righteous man can say, there's nothing to do, and walk away and throw up his hands and continue to build on a faulty foundation. Mm. Or the righteous can say, I think there's a problem here. Let me go start another foundation. Then he goes to start another, a new foundation elsewhere. Or the righteous can say, well, mm. uh, he walks away, he's discouraged, he gives up his faith, like you hear a lot of people say, yes, that I gave up on Christianity, it's boring, I don't understand it, and walk away. Or the righteous can say, I will throw down all that I built, and I will restart again, I will build a new foundation. Whatever it costs, I'm going to Whatever make it Whatever it right. costs. So if we are ready to really do some, then as, a, as pastors, as members, as whoever we are in the body of Christ, it's time now to test our own works by fire. Mm, mm. And then let's start something. Go back. See, this gospel is called everlasting gospel. Mm. If it's everlasting gospel, then no single individual, no individual, mm. no single person can complete the assignment of preaching this gospel. Mm. So if that's the case, the, 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 the mindset of Try to take the whole counsel of God. I want to take your faith on healing and prosperity. On, and if the whole counsel mm. in one year mm. will be an aberration. It will be an absurdity. Mm. So I will, if I were a pastor, and I know that somewhat what I've built or what I'm building cannot stand the test of time because it's subjective. So all I'm going to do will be to go back and test it. And I can dedicate the next one year teaching on discipleship. Mm. Bible study, Sunday worship, all my programs, I will structure them to discuss different aspects of discipleship. Mm. After which, we'll be able to see. It will deplete your numbers if you are a crowd gatherer. Mm. Once you start teaching discipleship, that is the time you're going to know whether you have true disciples or whether you just have uh, 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 no customers, uh, uh, converts. What Reverend is saying is absolute truth because this was what happened to us. <laughs> Someone actually said to us, um, Pastor, I'm not ready. The way you're preaching, you are not going to get members. That's it. And I said, if it is five people that I'm going to be able to take with me to heaven, then I'm satisfied. The, the quality will be there. The quality. You know, so once you exhort, elevate, you know, and place a greater premium on quantity above quality, mm. then we're in trouble. Mm. Because then, you know, and that's why we're having these throat cutting competitions in church. Mm. Everybody is just, you know, uh, you know, my church is greater than yours, mine is bigger than yours, and uh, you know, and they say, well, I've been here, it's just a hundred people, it's just two hundred people, and everybody is struggling mm. to gather crowds. Yes, sir. And in some part of the world, especially where they see me, you know, an awakening in Africa, it's second service, two second service, yes, third service. Yes. It doesn't matter whether you are yes, duplicating yes, people, yes. the ushers, the choir, Ro and the workers, rotating are, people, you know, rotating people, mm. and then you know, or membership migration. Mm. You were once you were able to coin a, a cliche, um, you know, a lingo, something, just you know, 
you make a statement and then people run with that statement and that is the slogan mm. you know there are some going on in some part of the world mm. and you know and then they run with it they don't check the they don't check the etymology they don't check the you know the they don't verify the stand with the scripture yeah. you just run and then yeah. that's the in thing if it sounds nice if it, it sounds good nice. it must be nice so, and then they run with these things, and so we're not doing a, a, a good job. I say to some of the pastors, I say, say look, you're, you're having two, three, four, five services. You have 10,000 people. If you give it to me, if you give your church over to me, in the next three months, I, will, I might reduce them to 500. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm going to, I'll take the love of God, I'll preach the love of God, I'll teach, but I'm going to start with discipleship. Mm -hmm. That's where you know, because... Even when Jesus was going to talk about discipleship, he did not go ahead to give conditions for discipleship until he has, he has laid the foundation. And the foundation is, no one can be my disciple except he has counted the cost. Mm. And then he likened discipleship to a story building. Yes, sir. Story, mm. a home of stories. Mm. And he says, if you are going to build maybe a skyscraper, he said, the first thing is not to go to the market. The first thing is not to do anything. It's not to look for carpenters. It's not to look for cranes and all that. He says, sit down. Sit down. And it's funny. Hmm. Because until you sit down, more like in a restful position, <laughs> you are not able to do intelligent things. So he says, sit down. Whoever wants to build a story building, he must sit down first. And then when you sit down, they ask yourself the next question, how much is it going to cost? Mm. That's when you're going to consider how many stories do I want to build? Mm. That's when you consider how deep. If you know how many stories are going, then it, it determines how deep you must go. <laughs> you know, like uh, um, World Trade Center. You know, when they were now rebuilding it. If you go there right now, what has been rebuilt? It's four stories down. Yes, sir. Four yes. stories fully down, aside from foundation. Yes, sir. You know. Wow. So you so the higher you want to go, the deeper, the lower you have to go. So you say you can't so you're going to sit down, you're going to count the cost, you're going to count whether you have enough to finish it. Yes, sir. And how do you count the cost? You want to you, you want to do your uh, architectural designs, you want to do your uh, quantity Solving design, yes, I mean, um, you know, jobs, but your your kiosk will tell you this is how how much your foundation will cost. This is what it will bring it out of the ground. Mm. Then this is the they want to consider the quality, the amount, the quantity of materials and the types of materials to be purchased. Mm. All these form the fulcrum of discipleship. To say before you begin the journey, ask yourself: Are you ready to undertake this journey? Mm. So a lot of people who come to church say, I want to give my life to Christ. Because they have been promised that when you come, you will prosper after that. When you come, you'll be healed. Whereas you can be healed without even accepting Jesus. Mm. You say, how do I know? It's there in the scriptures. Mm. Two ways. Number one, there's mercy out there. And if mercy cannot cure you, and then you need God to do that. Go and look into the New Testament, in the Gospels. Most of the people Jesus healed were, they, they did not believe on him until after he had healed them. Yeah. And not only that, the scripture says, by his stripes we, we are were healed. healed. We were now healed. Now, do you know that healing is not just for believers? No. Because the salvation that we have is by the blood. Mm. The blood was not shed until he was crucified and he died. Yeah. And then he paid for it. But the Bible says our healing was accomplished by the stripes. And the stripes were laid on him before, before he, got, he, he got to the cross. Yeah. So I don't believe I can receive healing yeah. before assessing the blood. Yeah. And actually, it's supposed to be, miracle is supposed to be an advertisement for the gospel. Exactly. And after that, he say, Do you believe on the Son of God? Who he sees that I'm, a I'm the one that opened your eye? Oh, I believe. Yeah. So, you know, we promise them all these things, and they say, Okay, I will give my life to Christ. But that's not how it's supposed to be. And, and, and some of them, Oh, forgive me, sir. Because the scripture also says that um, we it, it, it's like we've given corruptible seed. Yeah. We've Instead promised, of the incorruptible. incorruptible. We've promised that if you come, Jesus will do this. But yeah. that's not the reason why to come to the Lord. As a matter of fact, it's actually so your life is going to be better. Are there areas, are there quality, I mean, uh, would there be quality added to your life? Yes. 
But it says, as many as will live a godly life in Christ Jesus they shall suffer persecution. persecution. You have not alerted them to the fact that, you know, uh, the, uh, their friends will hate on them, their uh, families will hate on them. I mean, in the early days, in Bible days, people were, you know, they can even take off your wife, you know, break up your family because you want to follow God. Mm. And so you will not dare come out for water baptism unless you are sure that you are ready, you've counted the cost. Mm. And now, we didn't tell them that the devil is going to fight you. Mm. Before, he had you in his pocket and could manipulate you. Now you are giving your life to Christ. Then some measure of warfare is going to come. Mm. And then you are going to go through, uh, for the matter of human rights, you are going to let them know that you are going to go through persecution. You will be opposed, you will be you know, insulted, other things will be done. Mm. But this is how to deal with it. Mm. I mean, is that not what Jesus was talking about in Romans 12, I believe from 6 downwards, that he was saying that revenge is mine. Yeah. Uh, it was 13, I think. Uh, but we want a, we want a revenge. Yeah. Of course, we'll get to that when we begin to see what, when he says, take up your cross. But it begins with the foundation. Mm. And this is where we always miss it. He said, how, how many of you want to go to fight an army of 10,000 people? And you won't see that to calculate whether with your 1,000 or 2,000, you can meet with that. Hmm. We don't like sitting down. And God doesn't do much except you sit. Sitting down is a restful position. Yeah. So now he has the bread. He's broken the bread. <laughs> and then he's multiplied, he's multiplied the bread in prayers. It will multiply in the hands of the disciples. Hmm. But the first thing he told them, go and tell the people to sit down. Let them sit down in 50s, in 20s, in 10s. Hmm. Sitting down. And so the, the people are sitting in and then you see them sitting down and then he was counting. Mm. And they say, Ah Lord, answer me. Just sit down for one, two, three, four, five, fifty. One, two, three, four, five. He was making them to sit down because that's a sign of rest. Mm. At the end of the day, we are seated with him in the heavenly places. At the right hand of the Father in the heavenly places. So sitting down is the mm. position that we ought to first teach. Once we teach about the sitting down to count the cause and say, look. My guy, you are giving your life to Christ. We are starting now. Mm. You started a journey. Mm. And this is a journey that you have to make up your mind. You are not going to turn back from the Lord. Then it makes a difference. Mm. My, 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 my. <laughs> are you listening? Again, I mean, my corruptible seed. That one has struck me several times when yeah. I think about it. Yeah. Because um, I've heard it preached. You have probably heard it preached. And could it be the reason why a lot of people are not, uh, or, or people are falling away? Or, or I, I would like, to, personally as a pastor, I would like to apologize on behalf of every Christian, uh, on behalf of uh, other pastors. Because in the crave, many times in the crave of wanting to, to just gather people, uh, we omit that importance of building a strong foundation. Like I said to you, people said to me, the way we are preaching, you are not going to get a lot of members. And I said, well, it is the Lord that adds to the church. And if our foundation is not well laid, the reason why we are the way we are today is because yeah. of this strong foundation. That's right. We were made to pray. We, I, I, I was sharing sometimes in church, in the Bible school I went to, we had uh, pun punishment. Our uh, punishment is, depending on your crime, is either you're going to pray one hour or two hours loud, in the room upstairs. Yeah, yeah. They want to be hearing you downstairs. Yeah. And then the, and the senior will tell you, pray for the person who is punishing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh my God. And you prayed, you were praying with you are angry and you are praying. After a while, that anger will dissipate. Yeah. And you know that okay, uh you knew you did something wrong. And but, so but, but then he's also teaching you discipline. Discipline, discipline sir. Spiritual discipline. Yes, sir. And you, you are disciplined in terms of submission. You yes, are disciplined sir. not to repeat that name, but at the same time, disciplined to stay in prayer. Yes, sir. Recently, one of my converts, uh, uh, my disciples, because he's a pastor now, he goes pastor's conferences in Lagos. Yes, sir. You know, I've been looking for him for years. And so my cousin calls me and says to me, Pastor, um, there's someone who has been looking for you here. And I said, uh, who could have? He said, the man said, you taught him how to pray. He said, you led him to the Lord. You laid hands on him. He was free with the Holy Ghost. So, uh, I, and, and I was looking for this guy. I've been looking for him for years. Then when he gave me food, hey, brother, so-and-so, how are you? He said, he said to me, 
you 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 did a good job of my life. <laughs> I'm, I'm holding <laughs> pastors' conferences. I'm working with pastors to see that they can go deeper oh and more complicated. And then he said to me, I remember one day that I visited you and you were praying. <laughs> he was not yet filled with the Holy Ghost then. Also, I think we have been praying for him. So, uh, I, I, and I was leading him in prayers and I was talking to him. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I, and we were praying. So after about one hour, he sat down. I mean, he reminded me that. So he said, he said, I stood up and I sat down. Huh. And then when I sat down, you stopped and looked at me. I said, what happened? He said, well, uh, you know, I'm tired of praying. He said, <laughs> I said, he said, I said to him, you saw me on my knees. Uh, you are and you up. had the confidence to stand up and sit there. He said, shut up your mind, get on your knees, and remain there until I stand up. Oh, my so, God. He said, so he went on his knee. I, I think we went for about three or four hours, and he stood up and said, oh, God, will I visit this man again? <laughs> but after that, he came into experiences with the Lord, mm. became very strong. Mm. And he reminded me, he said, the day you took me, I took him out for follow-up. And, um, and I saw some children just, you know, playing on, up and down. Yes, and there was this guy who had already grown up, but couldn't walk. Mm. And and then they saw me and uh, all of them ran, you know, they were running towards me. And, and the other one couldn't walk and was dragging. And I said to him, is that how you are created? Your mates are running up and down, you're dragging. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. Mm. And the guy just stood up mm. and then started running mm. with him. So he said, ah, is this how miracle works? And he was reminding me the things that I took him along to witness, hmm. that became, you know, the foundation, the pillars of his life. Yes, sir. That he said, I saw this live. Hmm. The man who taught me how to pray will not I stop until sin. after three hours. And so he just imbibed that and got lost into God. This thing is really sad. I, perhaps what we're going to talk about in church tomorrow also, but it's so important foundation because... Yeah. Without this solid foundation, it, it explains a nation where you have millions of Christians yeah. and there is no physical change yeah. in the structure. Yeah. The, the, the people who are corrupt on the streets yeah. come from some church. Yeah. People who are collecting bribes yeah. come from some Those church. Those are receipts. falsifying receipts, documents, yeah. signatures. They yeah. all come from a church. Yeah. But because of the foundation, yeah. so the, 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 the law or the desire to make it yeah. anyhow yeah. has superseded the desire to make it to heaven. Which also is the after effect of the kind of gospel exactly. you present to them. Exactly. If the gospel is the good news you know, of all that God has done to bring us closer to, our, to himself, and we are presenting prosperity, we are presenting just those things to them, even though we... It, then we inspire avarice, yes. cupidity, greed. So the people, when people think of the gospel of the good news of the gospel... It is grab, grab, grab. Yes, grab. Uh, the good news that I will make it. I will make it. Look at my bling, bling. Look at this. Not so that hmm. now... So it makes pastors not question the source of their membership income. wealth. Their income. You know, I had, an ex I had some experiences. And one of those people is still a, 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 is a pastor, a leader in that our local assembly. Huh. You know, he brought some people to church uh, and they work with certain organization, mm. you know, known to clergues and all that. Yes. And lots of corruption, you know, involved. And um, and they were, they were, those days, there was, was a lot of money to give, you know, 5,000, you know, in bundles like that. Mm. They were giving me money, you know. You know, so I, I, I called the guy and said, what do they do? He said, well, um, you know, this man is a, a boss of so-and-so. And, and I said, where did he get all that money from? Mm. I said, this, and I said, uh, please, I want you to go and investigate the source of the wealth mm. and all that. And and then they went and they said, this is the first pastor we have ever seen. Asking question, where did you get money from? They want to help you. Mm. They offer to buy us all the equipment. They, and then they now send him and send some people to me. They say, the way he is, you are preaching now. You will not get people. You won't have money. Mm. That your own mouth too much. You won't have money like that. Mm. Another. Mm. Guess what? By the grace of God, I I, I I succeeded in, you know, I stood my ground, preached the way I show, disciple people. So guess what happened? Yes, sir. Those people later were transferred. One of them relocated outside this country. It was eighteen years after. Wow. 
that I laid out to, to the Lord. Wow. In tears. She was calling, she was begging me. Laid out to the Lord. She did. She's still a disciple. Amen. Amen. Laid out to the Lord in the U.S. She did. She's still a disciple. That brought her husband to the Lord. Her life and her experience brought the husband to the Lord. Mm. I led him to the Lord and organized for their water baptism. Mm. And witnessed them baptized in the U.S. Mm. Now, the man that was sending in the money that I now told them, if they can't explain the source of this wealth, he needs, he needs to stop. Mm. Don't send money to me. And, all that. and they, they didn't stop. They stopped and all that. The man went to, you know, so many things, had so many problems. Anyway, he, he retired. But guess what? Mm. That man is born again. He's literally a pastor now. Mm. Because somebody confronted because him. Because somebody was willing to challenge his lifestyle. And he said, you know, um, this other person was talking. I said, ah, pastor is uh, it's all over the U.S. He's ministering. And I saw him. He said, oh. He said, that man had always been like that. Mm. His heart is for the things of God. Mm. He said, he preached it. We didn't understand what he was saying. But he's, now I understand because I have come into it myself. Mm. So if we are willing to endure temporary contradictions and temporary misunderstanding or whatever it is, you are just willing to stand for what you, he was, I mean, he has called you to do, mm. which is to preach the gospel. Yes, sir. All that, so everything in the gospel, preach what God had done to bring us closer and not take it to monetary things. Then the people are going to respond. Yes, sir. The gospel but now, of the kingdom. But we are now inspiring greed and avarice and covetousness. You know your member is a civil servant. And by reason of how much he's, he earns, he's not supposed to be able to afford a 15 million naira car for you or for himself. He's not supposed to invite you to dedicate a seven-star hotel, five-star hotels. And you go there to deserve, you never ask how they got the money. Mm. And then you are proud, you say, God is prospering us here. Something is missing. Yes, because now you have changed the gospel to mean you're not supposing, like the, uh, Paul was saying, they suppose that godliness, mm. I mean, they suppose that godliness means great gain. Mm. But it is gain, I mean, it is godliness and contentment that the Bible That's says is gain. gain. But now you preach the gospel to present it to the people. Similar things Jesus confronted. Because in the days of Jesus, when they were saying, don't, don't you see all these people? They don't know the law. They are poor people. You know, they said that in the book of John. These people who know not the law, they, God is not pleased with them. So the priests were preaching, were teaching the people that if God was pleased with you, you will be wealthy. Mm, yeah. That was what he was correcting, that you cannot suppose that godliness equals great gain. Mm. Because you say you can't argue with results. You can argue with results. You can bring water out of the rock, yes. but you never get over that. Yes. Yes. And as the last time I read in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, some will say to me, Lord, Lord. And I will say, I don't know you. Depart. Because the fruit of your life does not tally with the fruit of your ministry. Mm. So all this money that people are flinging and they are buying, yeah, they are buying cars and living, you know, in opulence and ostentatious life. Where did you get that from? Mm. And the people that are bringing in this money, did you ask them what they do? Mm. I said, how did you get this money? You know, I, I, I've been in places where people have brought in fat money, you know, in millions. And, you know, somebody brought one point something million to me one time many years ago. And I said to him, that was a lot of money. Mm. Of our money then. And, and I asked him, where did you get that from? He sat down and explained to me, this is the contract I told you when I got you. You prayed for me. And this and this. And this is my profit out of it. And out of that, I have given, I'm have giving this tithe, this amount. And I want to support you with this amount. This is how the money came. Then I collected it and prayed for him. But even then, I collected I put it on my table and I asked him, what investment are you making for yourself? I said, this contract will not continue to come. How much have you saved? I said, well, how about your savings? How about uh, investment? Okay, if you have not made investment, I said, don't worry. I know what investment. I'll buy some properties for you. I use this to buy those properties. Give you the paper. When next you get money, you can bring it to me. Mm. He said, no, sir, I, I will have money to invest. I promise you. Do that and come and show me. Mm. And somebody will say, you know, and, and some pastors accuse me, say, you have been over-righteous. No, I said, been a father. I said, I just want to do what I was called to do. Because I have a million ways to make money, but I have only one way to do what I've been called to do, which is to do it thoroughly. Yes, sir. 
And if I'm looking for money, this is not the job to do. Mm. Even though now it's now synonymous with wealth. This is not the job to do. No. It's a thankless job. You and I will not be here and junketing now. We're talking about seven nations and we're now making, it's now become eight nations. Mm. And then we're saying, Lord, how are we going to go through this? So we are doing what we're doing because we have been called to do that. Mm. And so if you are not called to do this, then all these controversies happening, it just shows that these pastors have not been discipled themselves. They've not been discipled themselves. Ah, amen. It's like, this is, this is interesting, but I am still reminded. Yeah. Let's, how can we help the Christian who, is, who has gone through a situation or situations who have found themselves in this place now? What can, how can we help somebody who is listening right now? Since we promised yesterday yeah. to mention the pillars, those foundations. Okay, so well, I, I have mentioned the, the foundation. Is that count the cost. Mm. The journey you are on is not a static one. It's mm. a progressive one. Mm. And you have no explanation for standing still mm. or going back. Mm. And it can't be boring. You can't say uh, 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 the Christian life is boring mm. uh, and, and all that stuff. No, 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 no. It's, it's a progressive one. So you need to count the cost. Mm. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, when you've had an encounter with the Lord, you can always say, I know I'm ready for him. Yes, sir. Once you have counted the cost, then you begin to go into looking at the service. The first thing the Bible mentions is in Matthew chapter 10, verse 52. Mm. And what he says is, whoever wants to follow me, a disciple is not greater than his master. But mm. now I'm calling you now to be as your master. Mm. To be as your master. And what does that mean? It then means that you have to deliberately begin to give expression to what the master has done in you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. First John 4, is that 20 something? Or 14, he said, as he is, so, so are, we are we in this world. Mm. And Colossians tells us, and you are complete in him. Mm. So if you are complete in him, we know that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Sure. That creation happened in your heart. So that you got born again does not change your physique, it doesn't reduce your height, mm. it doesn't slim you down, mm. it doesn't do nothing to your body, mm. even your mind. Mm. So the salvation of the mind comes with renewing. Mm. Okay, so renewing your mind is a process. You are being in school, you are a disciple, you are trained. But now, you have not come to a new master. It's time to unlearn the things you have learned before. And relearn. And now relearn new things. As a matter of fact, somebody said that, uh, is he having tough life? Is the one who said that the, liter uh, the literates of the, of the 21st century are those who can unlearn, relearn, and learn new things. Mm. They're not those who have not gone to school. It's all about learning and making changes that are necessary. Wow. All right? So he talks about you. The first thing is Matthew 10, uh, uh, 38, be as the master. Mm. Now, if, you, if he has worked on us and then we know that we are new in our hearts, then I want to begin to give reflection. And when, when, when we were growing up, what he told us is, Ask yourself, what will Jesus do? Mm. You remember WWJD? Yes, sir. Okay, WWJD, what will Jesus do in this circumstance? <laughs> and somebody said, well, the, Jesus can only give expression to his life in you yeah. if you let him. And then they taught us, be little ways. How do you know? You know, I, I use this illustration a lot. So if you ask people, how many of you are impatient? They will say, I'm, I'm, I'm never patient. But someone has sent you, has sent you, um, what do you call it, a text message that you felt was rude. Mm. You know, you told me someone sent you a message. And then you wanted to reply. Then you stop on the way you spoke with me about it. Mm. We analyzed what he was saying. Then you continue writing. Then I saw you editing. Then I, you see, because you didn't reply immediately. Mm. You know, you are changing some things. Mm. Then you restructured. Then you, we discussed. The, by the time you were now replying, the, the next, immediately the man replied, the sin he is folly. Yeah. Because you were able to project Christ. Mm. What he said was annoying, mm. especially a man that you have been blessed <laughs> for so many years. What he wrote to you was insulting. Yeah. And anybody who 
is in your capacity who had blessed someone for so long, even though he's an older person. It was rude mm -hmm. to have done that to you. But you did not reply. We had conversation on it. You read it. I saw you reading it and editing it. Mm -hmm. By the time you send the thing, it elicited instant response to say, oh, this. And then he started speaking in a conciliatory tone. Yeah. Because you allowed the patience in you to mm -hmm. come out. Mm -hmm. You had the capacity to instantly hit him back. But you did not do that. So if you hold back your response in five minutes, I mean, just you're doing that, a call comes in, then you stop. Then you try to edit it. Then another person is talking to you. You say, okay, I'll call you back. Sorry. So, and, and then another person, and then after a while, you get to say, maybe there's no need to reply. When yeah. I say him, we'll sort it out. Yeah. So and, and that tells you that you are patient. Yeah. That you have patience in you. You have the ability. You have the ability, the stamina on the inside of you to be patient. Yes, but the choice as to whether you exercise that is in your hands. Mm. So discipleship is that which teaches you that now, Jesus, how would Jesus have responded? Then you begin to see when they insulted him, when they asked him, when they queried him, when they said, you know, say insulted him and, you know, and smote him, if you are the son of God, come down, if you are this, if you are that. And they keep doing all that. He did not, yet he opened not his mouth. His mouth. And then you now go to First Peter 2, and then he said, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus. I mean, uh, where he was talking about, you should follow in his steps. Yeah. Who was reviled, he reviled not again. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. then when they buffeted him, he committed to him that judges righteously. Today's believers, you know, converts, don't believe that God judges righteously. Mm. It doesn't, they don't believe that God is going to vindicate them. They would rather take it into their hands. There are people who say horrible things to me at certain times. They say things against people that I spent my life, you know, pouring it. I had no investment. I had nothing. And these people went against me like wild animals. Mm. It took me 14 years to call one of them who was, and I said, stand up. What happened on Sunday? So and, so and he said, and some of them were looking like fools. Because right among them, there were people who knew the truth. But I didn't have to explain anything. Mm. And we learned at those early days that if we are going to be as a master, if people are insulting you, it's like splashing mud on you. Yeah. If you try to clean it immediately, it will spread all over the place. Uh, but if you wait for five minutes, <laughs> it dries off. You do that and it's all oh God. <laughs> so that's what discipleship is. Oh, the first yeah. step is must be as the master. Mm. The second step is, it says he will, must bear his cross. The first one is uh, John, I mean, Matthew chapter 10, verse 52. The second one is Matthew chapter 10, verse 38. Whoever will follow me, anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me, is not worthy to be called my disciple. Mm. Now, you cannot follow the man who died on the cross and you want to walk on paved path. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have to go through some bumpy roads. Because the emblem of your faith is the cross. And what happened on the cross was not a beautiful experience. No. It, was it means that, it, you know, he was bludgeoned, he was beaten, he was wounded, he was pained, he was assaulted. So that if you really want to take up the cross, yes, it requires, if you want to be a disciple, it requires that you be able to endure insults. Endure contradictions, endure misunderstanding. Even what, what did he say in first Peter, uh, first Peter? When he said, "What benefit is it if you were buffeted for the wrong thing? Then you have no glory. But if you are doing the right thing and the people are insulting you, yes, then he said, great rejoice. Glory, rejoice, because then you can say you are a true disciple yeah. of the man who went through that process." Because you are not going to be nailed on the cross, it will be of no importance to you, yeah. of no value, because it's not redemptive. No. Someone had done that for you. Mm. But then, to give expression to that life, it says you now need to take your own cross. Your cross will be in form of insult. Yes, sir. It will be in form of, you know, slander, people slandering you, yeah. or contradictions and uh, lying against you and all kinds of things. Yeah. Your ability to shut up and just commit things to God who judges righteously. Mm. 10 years, 12 years, 13 years later, some of those people were, you know, laying claim on you say, I know I knew you when you started ministry. I knew you I will be friends forever, and everybody is struggling with me. They want to be identified with me. Oh, please show us how to get to the top, show us how to go around the world, show us this. 
And someone told me, they say, I pray with your name. The God of Reverend Lugbemi, who takes him around the world. Oh God, that God, the man doesn't have a church. God, that God. And, and, and I, I said to them, can you endure what I endured? <laughs> because that's what discipleship is all about. Yeah. Taking up your cross. Yeah. You can easily. Now, today, someone has slandered a pastor. The pastor pays the police to arrest them and lock them in prison for six months. What's wrong with us? Where is, where is the cross? It's, part, it's called hazards of ministry, or hazards, you know, occupational hazards. Mm. Every job, a nurse and doctor is exposed constantly to being infected with, you know, some kind of virus. for kind of virus and bacteria because they deal with injection, they deal with sick people. Our own occupational hazard is that you're going to be contradicted. People will work against you because what you are holding as gospel, as gospel truth, is foolishness to some people. Mm. So people are going to work against you. That's part of your cross. Mm. Because we, nobody has been called a, a, an engineer first and then a Christian second. Mm. We are all part time believers. Mm. We are all part I mean, we are all full time believers. believers. We are full time disciples. So you are a disciple first, then any other thing second. And if you are a full time believer, and any other thing second, as a full-time believer, it's your occupational hazard. Paul was writing in Ephesians, and he began to say, work worthy of your vocation. Yeah, he calls the Christian life yeah, a, a vocation. vocation. Work worthy of your vocation. So if you are going to work worthy of your vocation, the challenge is, the onus is on you to receive this as a calling. It's a vocation. It's your lifetime calling. A full-time believer, a full-time disciple. Then, Part of your occupational hazard is contradiction, is persecution, is insult, is misunderstanding, misrepresentation. I like this. Take up your cross. Being a Christian is an occupation. Think of that for a moment. It's a vocation. It's a job. It's a job. By the way, have you shared? Have you shared this video? If you have not shared it, go and do it right now as we're speaking. Click on that share button because this has got to be a blessing to someone. I know it's blessing you right now. So do that right now. My God. That's right. It's a job. It's a vocation. Just like you, you are, you are an, uh, a doctor, a, a nurse. You are serious about it. My Christianity, you know that I should wake up and pray. Yeah. I should read my Bible. Yeah. I should learn to forgive. Yeah. And so, some days ago, we were looking at the fruits of the Spirit. Yeah. And then the fruits of the flesh. Yeah. And it's so easy to see. It's easy to see. So if the flesh is gaining ascendancy... Then somebody has not tried to live like the master. Because the master ought to give expression, if he lives in you, yeah. ought to give expression to himself. And these things are processes. They are just processes of developing yourself, yeah, no. learning to listen, learning to follow, learning to read the instruction, and going to him yeah. to say, you've told me to do this. I don't have the strength on my own, but please give expression. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. God has not created any human being on earth. To love opposition, to love insult, <laughs> to love contradiction, to love being slandered on the internet. There's nobody, nobody who likes nobody it. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. I want to read good things about myself. But when those things are coming, I get to my knees and I'm saying, Lord, you called me. I know that I'm doing this. What well, these people are, this hurts. I submit that to you. Repose. Heal my heart. By the time I tarry with him in 30 minutes, in one hour I prayed, my heart is healed. And people I say, do you hear what they say? But I say, it's not important. You have anything to say or you want to go? <laughs> because then I'm no longer interested in what, because I've settled what it with the law. Say, yes, sir. Oh, my, my. You are so dead and so, you're so dead to these things and so alive to God that only God's opinion matters to you. Mm. Then you move forward. It's not that you love it. But is that you know it's part of your it's, it's, it's your part occupation. The, it's part part of the package. Part of, hey, La this one that we are issued to, I see pastors every time on Facebook or this thing. Uh, uh, you may have heard this one. I want to rebuke it. It's totally the, uh, uh, untrue. It's false. Lie from the pit of hell. No, just shut, shut up. up. It doesn't just matter. shut up. It doesn't matter. Why? 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 Why is uh, people's opinions so important to you and to your calling. 
that you have to come every now and then they say something against you. Actually, sir, that actually shows pride. I mean, we are trying to defend our our image. And if you defend yourself, God, you leave God to do nothing for you. Our image go. <laughs> you understand? Know, oh my God. And it is God's job to defend me. Yes, sir. You know, some person told me, they said this about you. I said, congratulations. I said to him, I said, when you flush the toilet, it goes to the lowest part. Yeah. Why is it that all the bad things they're saying about me and other people comes to you? You are probably, hey. you are probably located in a septic tank. Yeah. You are, I say you are in the septic That's all the bad things are flushed down there. You know, I did say this to somebody someday. They will come and say, you know, people are saying, I say, what? Which Who are people? those people? They are the ones generating those things. People are saying, people are saying. Why are they coming to you? Exactly. <laughs> and I usually say to them, okay, if people are saying that they have mouth, opinions are like noses. Mm. Everyone has got them. Yes, sir. But it also has a couple of holes in them. Yes, sir. So every opinion has holes in them. <laughs> Every opinion has holes in them. And oh, so man. if you decide that you want to fight because it's a vengeance in my leave me to it, I will repay, says the Lord. Mm. And then when we now go, he said, follow the step of your master, who though he was reviled, reviled not, again, not again, but he committed his judgment to, to him that judges righteously. Then that should take care of that. Could it be that, please listen to this carefully, could it be that as Christians, now you see, even though I'm a pastor, I'm actually talking as a Christian. Yeah. I, I, I can see that the challenge is out there. Uh, the, the church has not done the best in building people up. But could it be that we are not, <laughs> it's hard for me to put, but I'm going to put it. Could it be that there is no joy yeah. that is allowing a lot of people to go through what they are going through? Because for Christ, the joy that was set. He saw that yeah, joy. Yeah. And because of that joy, yeah. he endured everything right. that he was going That's through. Right. Now, if I have to fight not to go through anything, not to endure anything, there yeah. was, that, that probably means there's no, I don't have something in, yeah, the, That's right. in the future I'm looking forward to. That's right. That's right. You, you, and you also know, you, know uh, you hear people say faith is blind. Ah. And so when you say faith is blind, then you don't understand faith. Hmm. The Bible says, Abraham left and all the patriarchs they left all that they had because they were pursuing something yes sir because he said they saw and they were looking forward to a city hmm. a, whose foundation and builder is yes, god Lord. they saw something he says they endure hazard he said moses endured yeah. the, you know uh, contradiction with the people of god because he was enduring as seeing the invisible you know, it looks like Ozzy Moron. Seeing the, is invisible, but you are yeah, seeing. Seen, yeah. You are seeing with the spiritual eyes. There's something ahead of you. And so if you are so persuaded in that which, you know, you are following your faith, then you, you, you are literally seeing something. And it is that which you see that makes you say, Lord, you, you know, you gave me this assignment. I made a choice to follow you, mm. but you can handle this on you my behalf. Can, you can. And then you leave it on his table. And if everybody was, I say, well, I've left that. You know, after many years, some people came to, someone came to me. He said, I, I, I want to come and apologize to you. I said, why? What did you do? He said, well, I, I was at a meeting and uh, a man of God said, there's a man of God you spoke against. There's a man of God you offended. You need to go and meet him. If he doesn't pray for you, your life would never have been. I said, and, and you are the only person I know. I said, oh, you did something against me. Father, I said, my hands, my feet. I lifted the reason. I said, Lord, I, I surrendered. I, I said, I, I release you. I don't have anything against you. Another one came up and said, well, I need to see you because this is happening in my life. And you are the person that I know I should not have crossed. I said, you crossed my path. In Jesus' name, I release you. And I have had so many people say, my life is not okay. These are God spoke to me. God said, I should come and meet you. That except you, nobody can leave this. Home. And I said, Lord... Please lift it for your sake, for your son's sake. Yeah. I don't have any hand. I never cast anybody. You don't have to insult or curse anyone. Oh, Just know that you are following a man who committed judgment to him who judges righteously. Mm. And sometimes you want God to kill those people. But the spirit in you, the Bible says, is not the spirit to kill. <laughs> That spirit, the purpose of the coming of that spirit is, is to, to save bring, people, to bring life. life. 
And if you ask God to judge righteously, sometimes God will say, but you know more than him, so why are you angry? Yeah. You too did that to somebody. You know, I remember those days, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I would see, I would see SU, and I, there's a particular guy, I can't What's remember SU? his name. Some people don't know what is SU. Yeah, okay, Scripture Union. In the days of Scripture Union, these were, these were the guys who came into the understanding, uh -huh. you know, on campuses and different places, came to the understanding of the gospel. And, and, and there was this brother who had a very big Bible, very big Bible. It's not digital days like this, this in the 70s. He would carry that. Now, he was bald here at the center of his head. I didn't know I would be getting bald this way. So now, this guy was bald. So I called my friend. I said, come and see this guy. And they would be making fun of him. I said, he carried so much Bible on his head that he's bald now. He's not going to sit down somewhere. So when he comes in, we just make one of him. When people started dealing with me and they were stoning me, the image of that man came to me. <laughs> I remember that. I did that to somebody. If he had prayed that God would kill me and God had killed me, I won't have, have opportunity to have. You know why you said that? I don't, I don't remember Elijah. <laughs> when I saw this, he yeah. said, man, wow. You know. So, so then you begin to look into this thing that it's not as bad. If you just remember where God brought you from. I think that's one of the, th the reasons why we are not merciful. That's right. We, we, we forget. forget where they come from. Mm -hmm. and, and I think also that that's, um, informs our, uh, our disillusion, thinking once we become saved, that's all. That's all. Instead of now making effort to now move further, and mature. Yes, sir. In fact, and then your maturity should be measurable. We should see the difference. The other thing, again, he says, is if you will come after me to be my disciple, you must deny yourself. You must deny yourself. Now, there's a difference between self-denier and denying self. Mm. Self-denier mm. is, is, is ascetism. Is you know, trying to say, okay, I don't want to work the television. I don't want to eat this food. I don't want to eat meat. I don't want to eat vegetables. I don't want... That's self-denial. But denying self is denying yourself the right to claim ownership. Hmm. So, and, and, so there's qualification of terms. Hmm. He's saying you must deny yourself. In other words, you must... I mean, it's not self-denial. Hmm. It is denying self the right of existence. Hmm. Hmm. You, you get that now? Yes, sir. So you, 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 you deny self to say no. That's why you can say things like, if, if, if I belong to myself, if I owe myself, or if, if, if it was possible. Jesus got to that point. Yes, sir. Because I, I don't really, you know, <sighs> after seeing what I'm going to go through, Father, if it's, if, but not my way. Mm. You, so you are denying self the right of existence. Because when you go to read first Thessalonians chapter 5, when he say, well, the one that is coming in and they're sitting in the temple of God, we know that it happened 70 AD mm. when there was someone, you know, when General Titus, you know, invaded Israel and uh, Jerusalem and then made them to sacrifice pig yeah. in the place where they offered yeah. sacrifice yeah. so that they can violate, they violated the place. The people were not able. But equally, think about it this way. Who is he that sits, where is the temple of God right now? Mm. Your heart. In us. Okay, if the temple of God is in you, who is he right now that is stopping God from sitting and enjoying his throne in you? The only person is self. Yeah. It is self that says, he says, stand up and pray. I say, oh Lord, I'm so tired. Ah. Okay, I'll do it in the morning. So self, stand up, go pray. Now go to Bible study. Oh, there is a football today. I need to work this. Stand up, do this, or give this money. You say, oh, Lord, that's too much. I, I don't have this all that I have. Mm. So it's only self that rivals with God in our heart. Mm. He's, the, he's the wicked one. And anything that rivals with Christ in your heart is antichrist. Yeah, yeah. It's antichrist, not the man that is coming with horns from Middle East. Antichrist, you are the temple of God, and someone is denying Christ from sitting and enjoying his throne. Yeah. And that is self. So one of the qualifications, or one of the one of the pillars of discipleship is deny self. Denying self, not just self denial. Den denying self includes self denial, yes, sir. but not limited to it. Yes, sir. Is denying self the right of existence to say, if the Lord wants this, that's how what happened when we got born again. We understood that we are all solo. We don't belong to ourselves. Mm. And like I said yesterday, that you know God owns. 
dual ownership of us by creation and by redemption. Mm. So if you have then been bought and you believe that you belong to him, mm. then you deny self the right. So you wake up one day, sometimes God has spoken to us, they take half of your salary and then go and do this mission with it yes. or plant it into this. Yes, we didn't say no. Mm. Nobody was telling us 10% then. Yeah. We didn't say no because we knew we had no right to say no to the person. Yes, sir. And every time we want to give offering, nobody quotes, quotes scriptures. No. We say, ask the Lord what he wants you to give. Yeah. I remember somebody came to me and said, uh, immediately I was, I, I was praying. We were all praying. I said, ask the Lord what to give. This sister just wrote an amount. And then uh, I said, I don't know, I'm receiving a word, but ask the Lord. Add zero to whatever you wanted to give. Mm. Just, I said, if the Lord speaks to you. A sister came to me and said, the Lord just spoke to me. No, I had taught them the principle of adding zero before. Yeah, yeah. So she just came to me. Don't really say, say, please pray for me. She was crying. I'm weeping. I said, what happened? He said, as you ask us to ask the Lord now, he said, the Lord said to me, I should add zero. If I add zero to the amount I wrote, that's my salary. And he said, add zero and pay it in three months. So I said, what do you want me to do? He said, you are the one that told us to pray. I said, then you pray. I'm not the one who told you to ask zero. So I said, you know, she was crying. I prayed with her and all that. That month, she made three times her salary. Exactly, always. God gave opportunities. So, so she paid the salary and even bought a special gift, half of her salary for me. You know, that's the way we learn to teach people to give. And then we, then we taught the people to hear God directly. So since they could hear God directly, there was no need to beat people with you go to hell. If you don't give your time, you will do this. God is speaking to his people. Just shut up. He has his Holy Spirit to do that. Mm. But when you suspend the Holy Spirit from his assignment and you take over, you always look for manipulation, yeah. you know, ways to manipulate God's people. Yeah. Wow, wow. People of God, and we have gone one hour now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> It's 58 minutes now. <laughs> and we have just gone to just three. Oh my God. Which 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 begs to say that we have to continue. Uh, yeah, somehow. <laughs> this conversation Maybe. is not over. <laughs> yeah, we have to come <laughs> back again. My God. Well, we have next week. Yeah. I will let you know by uh, by tomorrow if, if it's going to be on Monday or on, on Tuesday. Um, but we will definitely continue this uh, as as long as the Lord gives us the opportunity, so we can be a blessing to you. But you have to do something for us: share these videos when you're watching them, so it can be. This is this is digital evangelism. That's right. Because if you cannot share common, um, if you can't share common um, stream, yeah. how would you go out and talk to somebody physically? That's right. So please share these videos and let it be a blessing to someone. If what you're hearing is indeed a blessing, wow. Has somebody heard something tonight again, uh, this morning, that's a blessing? It's, I don't know, it's just because we want to, we want you to be able to do other things, yeah. but we could just go ahead here. It's like yeah. we're just starting. That's right. We can go two, three hours with this yeah. without even blinking. Yeah. So, but we will, we will one will stop it here this morning. Uh, it's a Saturday morning. Some of you probably have things to still do today or maybe mm. to work or uh, do house chores. And uh, so, my God. So, on this note of denying self, I have the right to keep this going on. Yeah. But I have to deny myself <laughs> that <laughs> desire. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can do something else. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure it's it's going to probably be on on, on Tuesday uh, that we'll come back again. Uh, but I will send a message out on my Facebook page, and it will also be on this page, so that you can join us again either morning or evening. And let's keep having this kingdom conversation. The Lord will perfect all that concerns you. Amen. You will not regret what you have started in the Lord. He who began this work will perfect it in you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, we're in the season of Easter still. Let's continue to celebrate the King of Kings. Love you guys and see you soon. Amen. So, see you Monday, Tuesday also. We're going to be. If we can make it in two days, we'll let you know. Yes. Yeah. Shalom.
give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord have your way in me, Lord I give you my heart. I give you my soul and live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I take every moment I'm awake. 